Hey guys, I'm Chris Buck, and a very warm welcome to Ferrari Frightworks. And this week, we're going to be taking a look at my top five tips for the Line 6 Helix. Now, just a quick caveat before we start. It's definitely worth mentioning that most of these tips have been developed with a live context in mind, by which I mean near enough 99% of the use I've had in the Helix in the year or so that I've been using it has very much been in a live scenario, whether we're talking club dates, whether we're talking festivals across Europe and beyond, whether we're talking clinics for Line 6 themselves. The clip you saw at the start of this video was taken from a Line 6 clinic at NAM in Anaheim in California a few months ago. Near enough, all of the usage I've had from the Helix has been very much to the end of getting it sounding real, getting it sound as close and as realistic as possible to my full rig. So in that respect, definitely worth mentioning. Hopefully, however, these tips will be uh, more widely applicable to numerous contexts, but uh, sort of is worth mentioning. Number one, and definitely one that's going to be uh, applicable to most scenarios, and that is build your own presets. Now, for those of you already doing this for the last few years, it's an incredibly obvious suggestion. However, it definitely bears worth repeating. If the questions that I get on social media every day are anything to go by, couple that then with the questions you see on forums and questions on Facebook groups, it's fairly clear that a lot of people are using the presets that are built into the Helix as a jumping off point to create their own. Now, there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. However, I would employ you to at least at some point start from scratch, build a preset from the ground up. It will give you an infinitely better understanding of the Helix, what it is capable of, what to do, what not to do. I read a great quote actually recently by one of the Helix designers saying that in designing the Helix, they didn't shoot for good, they shot for real. Now the Helix is no different to any other bit of gear in that respect in that if you don't understand it very quickly, it can get into murky waters and get some absolutely diabolically bad sounds. However, if you have even a rudimentary understanding of how it works and how to crea uh, create a preset, you will get some very, very good results very quickly. Now, in delving into the Helix from scratch, that was the first thing I did when creating my preset. Plug, plug, any sounds you hear in today's video will be from that preset, which is available to purchase through my website. Any of the kind of little tips and tricks that I picked up with the Helix were pretty much exclusively through starting from scratch and kind of just launching myself headfirst into it and there were a few things that I wanted to touch upon which I've really found incredibly useful namely the sag control within the amp lock now I watched a brilliant video recently by Retchel talking about some of his kind of favorite little helix and Kemper tips and hacks and one of the things which he does which I can thoroughly understand is adding in a compression block at the very end of his chain to emulate that very slight amount of compression or sag that you get with a real valve amp when it's being pushed now another cool way of doing this without using any additional DSP or any kind of extra requirements upon the Helix is, as I said, to go into the sag control within the amp block or the sub menu of your amp block. If it's over to the left hand side, it's a very simplified way of putting it, but if it's over to the left hand side, you're going to be getting a very tight, very modern, very digital, dare I say it, interpretation of what your amp sounds like. The further you dial that in, the more it's going to sag in essence. Now, as I said, what I mean by that is a very small amount of compression just where you feel your amp start to give very slightly. And ultimately, the idea behind that is that it sounds thoroughly more natural and thoroughly more realistic to what you would get in the real world with a real valve amp, which is being used at real world levels. Lastly, and again, this is something which Rhett touched upon in his video and something I've been using ever since I got the Helix, is using the global EQ controls. Now, what this allows you to do, amongst other things, is to perform a low cut and a high cut globally across the entire EQ of the Helix. Now, valve amps, again, by their very nature, only really put out frequencies within a certain, all things considered, quite a small range, actually. And digital gear, by its very nature, puts out frequencies on a much broader spectrum. So again, there's no reason you want to be using any low frequencies 
below the 50 hertz mark. That tends to be where I kind of low my low end off or roll my low end off, I should say. And again, tend to be performing high cuts around about the 15 kilohertz mark. Again, that can vary from each preset and depending on what amp you're using. But again, that low control, definitely worth touching upon. Number two, and something that I've only really discovered quite recently actually, and that is experimenting with the input impedance on your Helix. Now this is something, as I said, I've only got use out of for the past couple of weeks since a few people actually suggested I delve into it on a video I did talking about fuzz pedals. Now fuzz pedals are notoriously picky in real life and it would seem notoriously picky within the Helix themselves, especially if you're using the fuzz pedal first in the chain as you would probably do in real life. They tend not to want to see an input impedance of any more than around 10K. Obviously, the auto setting being infinitely higher than that. So if you roll your input impedance back, you're going to be getting the most out of your uh, fuzz pedal recreations. Secondly, it's definitely worth touching upon. Nowhere to near to the kind of degree that you would with a fuzz pedal. Maybe look at rolling your input impedance back very slightly if you're using a particularly bright guitar with a particularly bright amp block. Telecaster is notoriously fairly chimey and fairly bright in the top end. And again, this seems to be a very common criticism of digital gear, the Line 6 being no exception, that the high end can get a little bit harsh and a little bit fizzy. So if you're looking for another way to maybe try and tame that very slightly without cutting too much of your highs, I would definitely recommend you check out the input impedance. Number three, and again, one which definitely applies to the Helix, but does have broader implications in regard to third-party gear, and assuming you're using this in a live scenario, is checking out the Line 6 power cap. And I guess, by extension, any number of the other full-range flat response speakers available. However, the reason I suggest the power cap is it has built-in speaker emulations within it, which, to my ears, are a world apart from any number of IRs that I've tried within the Helix, or third-party IRs which I've installed. I make no bones about it really in my initial Helix video that I'm not a fan of IRs. I find that it takes away that immediacy and that level of control that you feel you have or should have. And to me at least it sounds like I'm playing a recording back of someone else playing my guitar that just happens to sound a little bit like me. It's really not conducive to feeling inspired and as such makes gigs or live appearances feel that little bit more contrived or a little bit more awkward. As I said, the speaker emulations within the power cab, for whatever reason, I don't understand the technology, are a world apart and sound entirely more natural and entirely more realistic. Been using the 1x12 for the last year, but more recently I've been using the 2x12, which aside from being twice the size, and I guess obviously having the capacity to be that little bit louder, obviously gives you the function of being able to dial in different combinations of different speakers. Now, I would love to tell you I've got much use out of that, but to be honest, I still love the sound of a paired set of cream backs, very much similar to what I was using in the initial 1x12, so that's how I've been using that. But we're going to uh, take a line out of the back of that now and give you a kind of brief indication of what that sounds like.
Number four, now this is one that is particularly relevant to myself, but hopefully will have some use to you guys as well, is making sure that there are no drastic changes in level between any number of the blocks in your preset. Now again, plug, plug, I'm using my preset for this, but I'm going to demonstrate how each of the blocks is an incremental change on the last sound, by which it's infinitely more usable in a live context. A lot of the presets which come built into the Helix, I find have a little bit of kind of drastic level changes or sound changes or dynamic changes, which really aren't conducive to using them in a live context and would make any sound engineer alive want to start throwing stuff at you from the back of the room. I've set my Helix up exactly the same way in which I set my pedal board up. So each change is an incremental level increase on the last. So if I'm stacking game pedals, they get incrementally louder, not quieter, or not any kind of huge level change. They're going up or down. The only exception to that really being the solo boost, which obviously the sole intention of that is to make you a little bit louder, so you cut through the mix. But for the most part, everything is very controlled and very just calmly exercised, I guess, ultimately. Oh, yeah. Last, but definitely not least, at number five, we have my suggestion of blending more than one IR together. Now, the reason I suggest this is as much as I'm not a fan of IRs, as I said earlier, I can understand that there are countless applications where maybe they're not only the preferable option, but they are the only option. If you're on silent stages, running in years, obviously utilizing IRs is gonna be invaluable. And in that respect, the one way I've really found that I get close enough to my live sound to kind of be passable, I guess, is to blend in one or two IRs. Now, the two functions that I've really got a hell of a lot of use out of when blending IRs are the mic distance control and the early reflections. Of course, the early reflections doing that kind of emulation of what it would sound like to be in a room with that amplifier. The sound, I guess, ultimately reflecting off the corners of the room and giving you a little bit more of a kind of ambience. Of course, the microphone distance then working in conjunction with that to how much of that sound it picks up. And again, that's really been invaluable to give in more of a kind of accurate representation of what an amp sounds like in the room. Of course, if you're then using Using two cabs, pan hard left and hard right, experiment, experimenting, I should say, with each of those controls, giving you the air, giving you the dynamic and giving you the ambience of what it sounds like to be in the room with that amp, as opposed to having your ear an inch away from the grill of your speaker cabinet, which I guess ultimately always sounds a little bit alien to me. So again, playing around with that early reflections control, the microphone distance control, as well as the microphone control. Everyone has their different preferences in what microphones they like to hear on their cabinets. And if you haven't, if you've never really experimented with that, again, experiment. Dive in at the deep end, play around with the different ones. Some of the microphones are particularly good at dialing out some of that harsh top end that a lot of people find unpleasant. Some people love that for really helping cut through in a mix. Again, there is no right nor wrong with the Helix and whatever sounds good to you, is ultimately the best thing to do.
So there you have it. Hopefully that will be of some use to you guys. There's a lot of you out there I know who already love the Helix and are maybe looking to get the most out of it. As much as there are a lot of you who've bought the Helix and really can't get on with it. So hopefully some of the tips, tricks, hacks, whatever you want to call them in today's video will give you some, uh, just a better understanding of what really goes into the Helix and what is it kind of takes to create some cool sounds. So as ever, thank you very much for watching. I hope this was useful. Stay safe, wash your hands, and uh, I'll see you next week for another episode of Friday Fretworks. Cheers, guys. Take care, and I'll see you soon.